Yes. Hello, Peter Lovers. Hello, Benjamin. Hi. Thanks Hello. that I can be with you here in your nice home. Thank you. Yeah. Near Zurich, Lake of Greifensee. <laughs> we would like to tell you some stories about uh, rose cherries, flower beetles. Yeah. Uh, please. Yes, you have a big collection here, five boxes, all different species? All different species. It's uh, summertime now, so um, a lot of them are hatching now, and a lot of them can be set up for um, breeding. Which I did, um, and I'm trying something with like uh, smaller numbers of beetles, so it's maybe one pair or two pairs normally, and uh, smaller boxes to see if that works well. And I also went back to um, placing them in the window, so it's, this is the type of box I'm using. So these boxes are how many liters? Uh, six. Six. Okay. And I normally add a bit more substrate when they start laying eggs. Yeah, it I see that it's only filled to half about. Huh? Normally I fill it like this, oh, right. just a bit space. So it's the work of the beetle to work come back it. Yeah, they condense it. And how many do you put in there? One pair, two pair? Normally one, one male, two females, or one male, one female. This is just a test. Normally I have bigger boxes, Yeah. but then um, I think this can, or this has worked well for me in the past. And um, because the big boxes are kind of placed in the windows yeah. so well, and I feel that daylight is really good for them to lay eggs. And um, of course, artificial LED lights, the bright ones will work as well. But um, I have them a north facing window, like here. And um, and every day you have natural light from outside. Also, they're just the in box. the window, like the window blinds. Right. So they get. I, you think that's in, important for the rose cherries, flower beetles? Eh? I think we, we discussed this a lot. Yeah. I think light is, light is very important. And um, I also have good results with, um, like, say, these uh, LED lights, 6500 oh, yeah, yeah. But then they are normally too, too bright for me. So the beetles are active, they lay a lot of eggs, but you don't see them too much. Oh. So they just come out when the light goes on. And then they for half an hour active, and then they go and down. They go down. And I, I like to see them. So windows. So now they're to, to show us something. Show us something. Yeah, we are waiting for that. <laughs> Theoretically don't talking, we, just talking. Don't we? Yeah, we talk. Okay, okay. good. So this is one I'm very happy with. Let me see. I hope he doesn't fly away. Duck. Wow. Yeah, that's a very nice one. What's that? Another one. That's Trichaulax McLean. So uh, here's another one. I hope you just have to watch. They don't fly away. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's yeah, easy. They, start they, eating, yeah, they start eating. So Good. that's easier for us to check them. They don't fly away. They're an Australian species, yeah. which I had a long time back and was very much in love with them um, about 20 years back. <laughs> and now I finally managed to get them again at Frankfurt Insect Fair. I bought a few lava, and then to me they're super cool. They're a bit tricky in cocoon or pupa phase. So lava are indestructible, they feed on leaf wood substrates, everything. When they want to pupate, I gave them a big piece of wood and let it become bone dry, really incredibly dry. And they make very hard and leathery cocoons on the outside. So it looks like some black eggs on the oh, outside. Yeah. And then you have to really leave it dry. If it even gets a bit humid, the cocoon will rot. And um, wait three, four months, and then they hatch. And they're normally immediately active once they hatch. So that's a, that's a good thing. So they came out last week, so I'm not sure if they're already laying. An interesting thing with them is they're um, Australasian, so they lay um, much bigger eggs, I have a feeling. Like Agastrata, they're very big eggs when they lay. And um, to me, very interesting species with this orange fuzz on and the tiger stripes. And, yeah, it's a good so they seem to like, uh, like this uh, peach here. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. They, eat, it's, they eat eagerly. <laughs> and why is this feet here like this, it's stretched out, it's not yet uh, active or what? No, no, I think they do this as a defense. Oh yeah, sometimes, because, you know, yeah, when they, feed, they have they, some spikes here, yeah, that's yeah. right, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's sometimes even on flowers, some beetles, when you disturb them, they, they put the legs out, right? It's just meaning go, go away. Oh, yeah, <laughs> See, okay. this is more like, hey, don't disturb so Some them. of the flower beetles, they let them fall if they, yeah. if they are touched or if they are in These danger. These guys are a bit more relaxed. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. very nice, yeah. Beautiful species. So they have two different colors here. One is a little bit more orange, the other a pale, more pale. Eh? They should be normally more orange. Like the original, okay. like the ones I had 20 years back. I, I hope it's not a hybrid or something. Yeah. Or maybe it's nature variety, I don't know. But variability. But they are definitely very interesting. I'm so very happy to have them again. So this is a pair now? This is a male? I think so. You have to turn them around to see. I think this would be the female and this is the male. The male has the same indentation like other flower beetles. Yeah. So um, in the how say in the abdomen, if you turn them around, they have this uh, slight indentation. The females don't have that. 
But it's a bit tricky to find out. How no, with those it's actually not so tricky. With those it's like you just and, said. And they have no signs like horns or something? No. Uh, flower beetles, huh? No, these don't. These don't, yeah. But there are some, huh? Yeah. In, the, in, the, in this group, yeah. So that's very nice. Okay, this is the Australian flower beetle, yeah? Right? Yeah, very nice. So it, uh, you can put them here, over here, so that you can see the, yeah, what they do here. So they, I think they don't want to go down from this fruit, yeah? but we have another we have fruit, another fruit. There. So, so yeah? Let them be. I feed them with yeah. a special jelly. But here you have two pairs in it. I have two pairs, yeah. yeah. Okay. And some of them I will put in bigger boxes. These have just freshly hatched, yeah. like two, three days back, like I said. And I will put them in a bigger box. Okay. Depending on where I say I want to breed many, then a bigger box, and if it's more like, hey, I just, I'm fine with 10, 15 lava, then a smaller box, because... It seems he hears you already, I want to go out to a bigger box! <laughs> <laughs> huh? Looks like it. Yeah. Okay, so okay, we go to the next one, huh? Next one, yeah. Like I said, hey, this is something yeah, to we be... can open it here. So something to be can, tried. Oh, no, can open it here, so that we can see it here. Just oh, yeah, it. Okay. Take this phone on his back. So let's see. Um, here, this is super nice one. So let's put this on. Whoa, that color, huh? Hard Incredible. to see the color, huh? Yeah, yeah, it's it's it's, it's one of the species which is much more beautiful. To, yeah, I have to turn it a little bit around so that you can see this metallic, greenish, bluish shine, huh? Yeah. Let me see if I can dig for more. Uh, what is it as a species? It's uh. I think it's called the Sapphire of Persia, so it's a good name. It's an Iranian species, it's a Protezia speciosa cyanoclora. So yeah, I think here you have a probably a better color. See, there's an, here there's many. I just have them in for mating and then pre-feeding I will put those in a bigger box because I've got 12 or I think 15 which actually hatched. Um, it's, you know, the, the other one is a Turkish one, Preziosa, um, what is it, Protezia Speciosa Uselini is the one with the green, yeah. red and bluish. Yeah, yeah. This is the Iranian variety, which is entirely blue. So it's really cool. They got into the hobby and they're not so complicated to breed. I mean, the only problem is you need to, once they're L3, they're super fast in developing, they lay eggs. The beetles live very long. What um, does it mean, super fast? Like, um, I think egg to, la egg to L3, or to, to fat L3, is already like three, four months for me. Yeah. Let's talk about the substrate you use here. I have flake soil, but what I will mix in for, for bad... So this like is the classic flake soil with classic beech soil. wood and, and bran yeah. water finished. Yeah, and okay. an older one. I mean, it's not the older say, one, fresh yeah. one like for stag beetles. So you mean it, it was outside for about half an hour, uh, half a year? Half a year to a year. Yeah. yeah. But what I will add in is uh, leaf mulch for them. But like I said, they will go in a bigger box with leaf mulch. Yeah. And that's, um, I feel it's a bit better. They will. I had the feeling they were laying more eggs, the parents, when I had them on, on that substrate. Very nice species. So yeah. we put it back here. And they need, um, that's the probably the only tricky part. You need to put them in the refrigerator for once they're fed L3. And um, should be ready to pupate, you put them for, I would say, minimum three months into the refrigerator. What temperature? Four degrees Celsius. Mm. And then once they get out, they pupate very fast. Again, they profit from a, a more dry environment for pupation. And then once they hatch, they're relatively fast and active in, in mating and laying eggs. So probably they come from the north of the Elbows mountain range, probably in the direction of the Caspian Sea or what? Zagros Mountains. Argos, 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 yeah, Argos Mountain, yeah. So, yes, next species, please. Yes. That's my homemade jelly. Uh, this is your jelly that you made, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Had some uh, friend gave me a tip, um, Pavel Krapka, and he gave me some, some ideas and said like, hey, you can use um, sorbic acid to make it last longer, and that actually works well. And um, I make it because I wanted to add a bit more protein in. Yeah. So I have, uh, what do you call it, a vegetarian fish food, which I by mistake bought once. It's <laughs> vegetarian fish food. Yeah, it was a bit strange, <laughs> yeah. but then I didn't, I wanted to use it originally for goliatos, but didn't work. Um, because vegetarian, I said, okay, then what to do else with it? So I mix it with fruit, gelatine, and sorbic acid. So now they eat it a lot, and it actually adds a lot of protein into the mix. So it's a good jelly, lasts about a week. So it Super. doesn't get moldy, it just dries up at some yeah. point. And it does not attract too many of the Drosophila? No fruit flies okay. attracted to it. Okay. I mean, sometimes, yes, if you wait yeah, long enough, you will. That's normal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay, good. Next species. Yeah. Next species. Oh, next one is an easy one. This, this, yeah, this. Yeah, huh? Open it here, yeah, so that you can see what it, it's like. A, uh, it's the only one I have. The other ones yeah. are still in cocoon. Ouch. 
Okay, no, hold it out, right? It's a female, oops. Yeah, she's very active, huh? Oi. Yeah. yeah, she wants to. <laughs> uh -huh. Oh, okay. It's an African one. African, yes. It's a Dicranorina. Oh, it's the one that I've seen in Cameroon. Yeah, similar huh? to that, but it's... Yeah, um, I've seen it, yeah, of course. We have some photos also uh, where they came to the branches that they cut the bark of the branch so that uh, fluid comes out and then uh, you see them there. Oh, that's a very nice one, yeah. And this is a hybrid form. It's actually, a, a, you can't just debate. I mean, phenotypically it's the same. It's a Mikans crossed with John Stoney, but to me, I haven't found out what the difference between the two is except for coming from two countries in Africa. But, um, it's already an F3 or F4, so they, they're still very, um, how to say, nice. They're still not too small, they're still very active. Um, this is just the first one which I managed to hedge, but I have more cocoons waiting, so it's, it's good. The male will come and... And it's a pretty big yeah. uh, flower beetle already, yeah? With them I always find them a bit tricky with pupation. It's something I haven't figured out yet how to do um, properly, I always tend to lose a few in pupation. They need it somehow dry or undisturbed, I haven't figured out yet. Yeah. And the same substrate here like for the others? Yeah, okay. but normally like I said I mix in leaf yeah. um, as well, but here for egg laying it's actually fine to use okay. the old flax oil. Old flax or something. And do they compact it in the same way like the dynasty? Females or yeah, they. But I think it's more the activity. It's not that they really compress it like dynasties. Mm -hmm. It's more like because they keep moving it, moving it, moving it. It kind of sinks okay. down. Okay. But I yeah. don't think it's too much, um, too much to do with that. Okay. So number four. That looks a bit muddy, but hey, that's okay. There's already a lot of lava in. So um, you see the zucchini to feed the lava as well, and they really like the jelly too. So that's where you. The larva. Yeah, and the lava. Ah, now they're all hidden. Good. No, oh, here's one. Yeah, nice one. I want to put it on the fruit on as well. Table too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they like fruit, so it's fine. This is a species which looks very nondescript at first, and a bit, uh, you might say, blunt or ugly, but it's actually very beautiful. It's uh, Gymnetis panterina meleagris, and um, they look beautiful when they dry up. They become like a green, yellowish. But yeah, of course, it's hard to see now here, but... Uh, yeah. They now look black, I know yeah. that. Yeah, but if they're we, like the. If we would have something black at the background, it would be probably better to see, but uh -huh. no problem. So this grey stone work here? Yeah, yeah. Huh. we try. <laughs> yeah, let's put it down here. I'm trying to see, you can see the color a little bit better. Good. Uh, yeah. no. Yeah. I'm to zoom in and. Yeah. So that's typical, they, they play dead, huh? Yeah. So that is a typical move. If you turn them over, they just yeah. they play dead. Like and here males and females are different. Yeah, you have two. And I always forget which one is which, but the, there's a black one and there's a colored one. Oh, yeah, yeah. And one is male, one is female, but hey, I I'm, I'm, have to admit I'm bad in uh, remembering which okay. is which. <laughs> and the typical movement of a flower beetle on the oh, back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, good. Let's put them back, yeah? But it's a nice background for the flat, for the beetle here, this grayish stone here. It's very, we keep it. Yeah, we, we keep, keep it. it. Good. We keep it. Okay, good. So, wow. number one. five. And that's the last yeah. one, yeah? Yeah. Yet, uh, so. It's another preparation box, because there's actually one made. I have to dig now. <laughs> Uh, you, so you, you're looking for larvas now here? No, I'm looking for beetles. Beetles, okay. Uh -huh. Yeah, here's the female. Here, you, now you have to be careful, they're hyper, hyperactive. Oh, God, yeah. But you know those... Oops! <laughs> I get, let me get the male also, so I have to take the box away from... Oh, the car is... Oh, oh, yeah. oh, 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 oh. <laughs> The windows are open, you have to be careful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Yeah, maybe you hold it. That's Yuri Seller, typical it's, behavior. It's huh? difficult to keep, to, to hold them because they are so strong, you know? Yeah. yeah and that's, uh, that. it's a special Yuri Seller. It's Yuri, so yeah. strong, but it's nice, call, I can call it, huh? Yeah. There's, um, they're the latest, how to say, addition to the hobby. They're Yuri Seller Frontalis from uh, Cote d'Ivoire. 
And um, this is, I think, F2 now, actually. So they've been brought in, um, I think, in December or January of 2019. Mm -hmm. And this is the second generation I have. Um, very beautiful, very active. And this green yellow is nice because it's not the typical. It's neither the typical yellow of uh, Odisella Smithy, nor it's the metallic green. It's depending on how you look at it. It's quite nice. But let me find the mail. I have to do it just like this now. Very strong. Yeah. There's yeah. another female. That's not. So, no. Ah, here. And here's the male. The males have a very special horn, and he's a bit more calm, so we can show him. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. At the moment, it's my favorite Udicella species, but that's easy because they're new. Oh, 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 oh. you don't. Oh, oh. Well, it's jumping. Yeah, I have it. So, give it we put them back, I think. Yeah, the Otherwise, we'll look at it. Here? Yeah, put them in, and I put soil on them, and then... Yeah, so we had some nice pictures. So thank you, that's about uh, flower beetles for the yeah. moment, huh? I have some more, but those so are the most spectacular you can ones. keep them... How long do they live in this box, if you have them uh, for egg laying in this box? For a pair, I normally have for those, you have to, because they're highly aggressive, the larva, you have to separate out the larva. Because okay, they every one other. to a week, or what? Every one to two weeks. Okay. And normally I place something like, um, how to say, either a big piece of wood, or some, some fruit or something, and that's where you can find the lava. So when you see there's lava again, then you can um, find them. I somehow, the lava have the, how to say, tendency to somehow aggregate either under the jelly cups or under the fruit, and then you can easily see if there's lava already. So that's my way of uh, finding out without disturbing them all the time. Okay. Great, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, man. Stay tuned here in the channel because we have some more coming right now. Yes. <laughs> Thanks, bye-bye.